Here you have ridden, and the diesel grenadiers overran the last stronghold of the Hellfire Order, defeating Elidris and the Storm, and ending the third Magotech War. There's a strong flow of steam blocking the way. choice but to surrender. That is how technology came to dominate the current world order. In the desolated old world, repellent beasts and mages claiming to be weavers continued to fight amongst themselves. Some were even bold enough to launch raids against technologist outposts. Either search for the key.
ages and technologists was the source of that terrifying disease, the Iron Plague. People began to rust from the outside in, transforming into hideous, decaying iron statues of themselves. The war didn't take place on our soil, but the aftermath reached us nonetheless. Previously unseen magical creatures began harrying our village time and again. What an elaborate account. Curious, but let us move on. Every day I witness yet another family selling everything they own to move to this incredible new world. The newspapers never stop shouting about it. Apparently, technological progress is booming, and daily drudgery is being steadily replaced by automation. They claim the people are overjoyed, but why do we never hear a word from them? I cannot shake the feeling that the world is falling apart on all sides and the powerful care not in the slightest, while we must smile and pretend to be happy. Audacious. Do you realize that this passage by itself justifies a quite harsh sentence? That was just the first entry. Every page is rife with distressing theories and questions. I see. You do realize everything that happened is entirely due to your ignorance and arrogance. Each one of these notes perfectly illustrates your insistence on meddling in matters which do not concern you. Let's... Something weird is happening over there. I can feel it. Everyone's talking about folks going missing, and what of that deranged dwarf who's shouting about experiments? Exploiting the common folks? Superstition to undermine technological progress. What's next? Tales of impossible monsters, and... But however distasteful I find this, we must proceed, huh? The human mind functions in curious way. Helen, my first love, died a few weeks ago. I don't know what to make of that. Her parents will not visit her grave. They're that afraid of getting infected. Uncle Victor hasn't spoken in over a week. Even now, I can hear the metallic rattle of Aunt Hilda's joints. If there's any chance to save them from this awful death, I Silence! Oh, what about this one? Is it fair to mistreat someone just because they're different? Why couldn't we have found some resolution, some middle ground? Do you honestly think no one tried to prevent this bloodshed? The law's binding reality were our only hope to stop this cruel fate from destroying us all. How dare you challenge them? And now we come to the proof that you're the one who started all this. That the whole debacle is your fault. The odds are not good, I know, but it still bothers me that there's been no word from any of the emigrants to the New World. So I've decided to risk it. They're not asking much in return, after all. Only the unwoven filament. There it is. In your own words. Silence! These are your words. I smuggled the unwoven filament onto a ship heading for the New World. The interminable voyage from the Old World is finally over. The cries of gulls fill the air, alongside the chatter of folk on the bustling dock. But before you're free to embrace this new chapter in your life, there's the customer's officer to deal with. 
A young man in an ill-fitting uniform presides. Good day to you, sir or madam. Let me be the first to welcome you to the new world. You can become anyone you wish in the new world. A warrior, a magician, the president. <coughs> Please, pass me your documents and join the line. <clears throat> we are happy to welcome another human to the new world. You'll find lots of opportunity here. Please step forward for a customs check. You need to make sure you're not carrying anything illegal. Surface inspection indicates the new arrival is not a magical being, has no visible signs of corruption, and no evident symptoms of the Iron Plague. Nor do I observe any kind of smoke, magical glow, unusual light refraction, or other manifestations of illegal or unregistered magical artifact. Looks like we're done here. Head on through, and good luck in the new- Don't break the law and don't join any magical terrorist organizations. I have no idea who Mick Mortensen is, but the meeting point is over there. You can ask around for him. Okay. Feeling lucky, folks? Play You're certain that fellow holding the Crimson Arrow sign just announced the very person you're supposed to meet on the dock. Cracker. Up until your grand entrance, that is. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're here. But you could have chosen a less no stumping moment, huh? It's not your fault, mate. Everything will be okay. Hey, worst case scenario, I'll buy myself a beer or three. Alright. It seems we got off to a bit of a rocky start. Let's wipe the slate clean. Now it's time I introduce myself. Name's Michael Mortensen, but mostly folks call me Mick Rosie. Well met indeed. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. Me, for example, I have to get you to Mr. Simon. Don't take this the wrong way, mate. Not holding a grudge or anything, but I got knocked out because of you. We're not going anywhere until that's taken care of. Follow me? You're in the port, buddy. To make a few dollars, you can try your luck with some portside gamblers. If you're feeling adventurous and want to reel in a bigger catch, have a chat with Ernie and consider stepping into the ring with Grotwear the Crusher.
Splendid. We can go now. By the way, where's your suitcase? Right. Let's head over there. I'll follow you. A police officer in a flashy tech outfit step. The man delivers a parcel to the officer, who accepts it with a subtle nod, before passing something back in return. Listen up, partner. I gotta sort a little something out with Jimmy. But I'll be back in two shakes, don't you worry. I had a feeling we were gonna get along. The cop startles at Nick's exclamation his countenance darkening as he looks up at the imposing giant. It's a bu- What do you want, Mortensen? Jimmy, you owe me a little something. And since I'm in the neighborhood, I thought I'd cash in. The policeman's face grows another shade darker as he forces a smile onto his face. Yeah, I think we need to have a little one-on-one -on -one off the record. The policeman nods pointedly in your direction. <laughs> My partner likes getting down to brass tacks. Without ever taking his eyes off the policeman, Nick, finally he lets out a long, reluctant sigh and drops the mysterious package into Nick's mat. <sighs> Damn it, Monson. Here, take a gag on it, bastard. Nick grins with satisfaction. And keep this between you and me, all right? I understand. Hold on a sec. There's something I've got to take care of. Mick carefully unwraps the parcel to reveal a tiny heap of crystalline powder. Often. I'd have... Mick expertly snorts up a dose of orphan, and a blissful grin takes over his face. Oh! Orphan is a potent drug which amps up... Haha! <laughs> you won't regret... is openly weeping, anguish etched on his face. As you draw closer, a noxious but familiar odor wafts over you. The Stop bothering me! Damn it! What do you want? Your bags? 
Nobody cared a fig about Finley McClatchy as long as everything was working. Nobody! Only when it all broke down did they start going, Finley, can you help me with my suitcase? What do you want? Let me guess. Is it luggage? I just bet you want some fucking luggage. You'll get your luggage. <sighs> okay. I'll fix it. Just give me a few minutes, will you? You catch the sounds of a heated argument in the square. This is unthinkable! Absolutely not! I'm not going to do it! Richard, it seems you misunderstood me. Oh, well, well, not so fast, fella. No, of course. But you're deeply mistaken if you think we're asking your opinion on this. We hired you to direct this performance, and you will do what we tell you to do. Period. That's the end of this conversation. My vision is going blurry! Richard Maxwell Gracefield Parazee III closes his eyes and dramatically flops to the ground. The syndicate envoy bends over and discreetly places a folder full of papers in the director's hands. As you watch, the director's right eye opens the merest crack. Imbecile is gone, right? That, the goddamn ass licker! Richard Maxwell Gracefield Parazee III, in his characteristically nonchalant fashion. Ah, oh, Mickey, a radiant rosy! Richard, can't you ever keep your trap shut? Uh, I see. Uh, what, what do you want? Assistant? I thought the world was going to end before you finally showed up. The local branch of the Syndicate wants to make changes to my script. Moreover, there's no way the actors can learn new lines in such a short time. Especially these actors. Uh, have you seen them around? I Richard Maxwell Gracefield Parisi III wrings his hands nervously. But when his gaze returns to you, his eyes come... Why are you still standing here? Why aren't you racing around solving my problems and carrying out my orders? Can't you see? They're all drunkards! <sighs> Find them. Here's a list with all their names. Fantastic! Now move, move, move!
Have you solved my problems yet? What took you so long? There's only minutes left until the show starts and the actors aren't ready! There wasn't any time for them to study the Syndicate's nightmare script! Listen, you're my last hope. I need you to work as our prompter. Well, this has got to be your magnum opus. Did you say something, Giant? <clears throat> Go to the prompter's booth and get to work. And hurry up! Hey, hello there, fiery gentlemen and divine ladies. I hope your trip here was as magical as my new hairstyle. <laughs> Yes, yes, I heard about those few small bumps you faced along the way. Now, hold on tight, my friends, because the real star is about to appear. The boss of the gigantic Eastern Syndicate. Welcome, newcomers to our land. A land that lives and breathes freedom. As you may have guessed, we've had a small problem with transportation. But don't worry. Letta Jean and her team are already addressing this unpleasant issue. You'll reach Newark eventually, and I guarantee it will be all the more thrilling for the wait. In the interim, the Syndicate has prepared a special gift for you. A drama arranged by Newark's acclaimed stage director, Mr. Gracefield Parisi and his troop will put on a performance of The Broken Heart of the Enchanted Beast. His script in hand, though not a single line has managed to evade the conspicuous scrawl of a red pen. Zindo's underlings have revised the entire text, transforming the director's vision into an extended series of advertisements. Worse, the actors haven't had time to commit these revisions to memory. Now you must step into the spotlight and guide everyone through the tsunami of altered text. Today, you will witness a love story unfold and a vicious trap sprung, all in a sea of blood. Nerio, dear Nerio, this love's a snare, for magic and technology clash and flare. Yet, Mr. Zindo's new possibilities now may shine. <gasps> My sweetest violets defy this decree. Oh, Nerio, the weaver's darkest blight, their reckless magic turned day to night. Herald, mark my words, thou shalt see. Great power from the rifts, mine shall be. Nerio, beware! This path is fraught with peril and darkness. In the realm of creation, automatons make their stance. And with a fair maiden's favor, best your magical pants. My dear Gerald, thy fears I will ignore. I crave this magic and I must have more. Violet! Fair Violet! I know her well. Her heart is in science, not some spell. Young hearts entangled in this perilous strife. Ah, if Nerio has forsaken magic, trust in the Syndicate's might. Zindo could have saved his mind amidst this perilous fight. Nerio, dear Nerio, we must now part ways. Zindo's automatons hold more wisdom in store than any mage. So here we part forevermore. No, Violet, you can't break free, it's clear. My soul is bound to dark magic. My oh, Nerio, your transformation's too extreme. Beware of magic, upright and fair. It tempts and beguiles, but can't truly care. This is a disaster! A complete failure!
as if from nowhere a woman's voice calls out to you. You're all but certain she wasn't there. Hey, guys! Hello! Are you friends with Director Zindo? Hey, hey, buddy. Didn't your mom ever tell you not to chat up people you don't know? I've handled my fair share of these types. Maybe you'd best let me talk to her. When you turn from your brief exchange with Mick, you find that your counterpart has vanished just as quickly as she... Judging by everyone else's reaction, or lack thereof, they didn't. Yeah, that was a weird one, all right. It's nothing out of the ordinary, partner. No Welcome to the Tatterholt slums, once a pirate haven. Back door to the new world. Things aren't quite as lively since the Syndicate rolled in. But you might still find something to your liking. And if you ever need a bigger gun, the Syndicate even set up a factory with an automaton production line. That would be a wise purchase, trust me. The streets are filthy with bandits and muggers here. And have you heard about the Drowners? The curse that cluster around the shipyard? Some days they outnumber the pigeons and mice combined. I wouldn't say mages are common exactly, but they're around and they're not in hiding. Mr. Simon runs the show here, of course. Speaking of which, let's not keep him waiting, huh? And off we go. Nah, I haven't caught wind of it. Damn, just look at that guy. Is that a face or what? Just like my mother-in-law when me and Lizzie were marrying, right? The policemen start laughing, apparently blocking the way for the strange crowd led by the dwarf. Let us in! Let us in! I must speak to Director Zindo immediately. Vanishing, poof, without a trace. Leslie, it's a nightmare. Citizen. These hands are dealt with plenty of crazies, trust me. Why don't? The dwarf begins to almost drown in the incoherent flow of the world. There's no time for that, no time at all. They clothe everyone. Director Zendo, his assistant. They're dabbling in horrors, twisting ordinary folk into monsters. They must be exposed. Abruptly, a growl rumbles from the throng. Horror grips the dwarf's expression as one of his companions trembles. Gradually it spreads, enveloping the entire crowd of creatures. As their heads lift, a predatory glare fixes. No, 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 stop! We have to see the director! He must- ah! Without warning, the creature flings the dwarf aside, his head meeting the ground with a resounding thud. Silence in here. Oh, fuck!
Oi! Bloody hell, are you hearing me? Operator? Flipping hell. Oh, apologies, sure. I'm on hold here. Observe closely. A stout dwarf. His beard as fiery as the plumage of a phoenix. A raised index finger. The universal gesture to wait. Oi, Vinny, is that you? <laughs> nah, don't be daft. Vinny, listen here, mate. We're all in the same boat, ain't we? Vinny boy, tune in and drop the bollocks. Try and hustle me and you might end up underground, right alongside my contraband. Steady on, Vin. Stay sharp out there, yeah? Oi, how's Auntie Judith? She all right? Hey, boss. We're back to give you the lowdown. That gizmo you wanted is snug inside our guest suitcase. The very one partner's holding right now. Oi, there you are. How's the land of freedom treating you, mate? Look at you. I never expected Hilda's ward to grow up so f Oi, blimey. Now ain't you looking dapper. Spot that, Mick? It's all snark and snoot out here. Bit gritty for my tastes. There's the wanderer. How was the old voyage, eh? I believe I'm starting to take a shine to you. That's our style, mate. All right, all right. However you got here, you're in the fold now. So let's have a toast, eh? Here's to the pair of us. The grand old continent and the road that lies ahead. Having declared his toast, it's evident that Red Simon is wholly committed and will brook oh. no deviation from the ritual at hand. With a practiced flow, Simon fills three glasses to the brim. All right, lend an ear. Picture young me, fresh off the boat, wide-eyed and fancy-free. It was all on my shoulders. Every lesson and every scar was hard-earned. But fear not, mate. I'm gonna lay it all out for you. So get scribbling. The do's, the don'ts, the beasties that lurk in the shadows. Simon tops off his drink, draining the last of the spirits. There's a moment of silent awe for the empty bottle before he swiftly discards it, and he's back in the narrative river. Puffs of cigar smoke, punctuating his words. You got any clue at all what the New World's game is, mate? This bloody continent. It's a massive metaphorical melting pot. Wizards, tech heads, sketchy figures, ladies of the night, and yes, even those pesky goblins. Doesn't matter what your dream is. What you've got to keep fixed in your noggin is that to reach it, you need the whole motley crew. Every bleeding one of them. And here's the kicker. From one old timer to another. Oi, <laughs> I'm talking too much. Let's get down to business. Simon is extremely gentle with the suitcase, as though it contained armed explosive. You think Fortune's smiling on us, boss? Yeah, Fortune is smiling on us today. Simon swiftly snaps the suitcase shut and stows it out of sight. Now for the less than jolly part of our tale. There's a group round these parts, goes by the name Arcane Tribunal. You'll find the tech syndicate's fingerprints all over anything remotely magical. Not a single artifact slips past them, especially without the right papers. There's a top-notch magical item detector at the station. The plan was simple. Grab a suitcase, jump on a train, head to the capital and call it a day. <sighs> but now, mate, we've got ourselves a wee snag. Then, about a week ago, a train conks out and they can't get it running again. Now his lot's taking over all the key posts at lightning speed. Absolute migraine for our little operation, I...
So those blooming syndicate brass planted their own bloke, Alazar Cogsmith. My Tobias is a fine fellow and never one to pass up a drink. And when it comes to running the magic detector at customs, he always knew how to keep his mouth shut and where not to poke around. You follow? Now we've got this fresh face, Harold Fugar, with his own agenda. If he gets the slightest inkling that something's off in the cargo, our little adventure's over. You're fresh blood round these parts. No reputation to speak of and no debts. You're a clean slate. Catch my drift? What I need is to get my Newman back into the railway business. <clears throat> what I need is to get my Newman back into the railroad business. I need someone I can rely on to conveniently overlook your magical baggage. Alright, step one. Get rid of Newman's standing hat. Off you go. Best of luck and keep a sharp eye out for trouble. Inside the grimy hovel, a man's form leans heavily upon a table. Empty bottles are scattered around the room, signs of a losing battle with alcohol-induced delirium. What the hell? Ah! It appears we have company, my dear Mr. Newman. I happen to have with me the most exquisite moonshine you will ever taste. Uh, uh. Indeed, Toby, indeed. Here's to the two of us! Unable to support his own weight any longer, Toby crumples until his head comes to rest on the table with a thud. A jarring croak emanates from Toby Newman's throat. If your words fall on deaf ears, Tobias Newman remains oblivious. I must respectfully decline. Mr. Newman is in the midst of a critical tasting session for my latest product. His capacity for imbibing my moonshine is truly remarkable. Let us set aside any thoughts about your wife, that lamentable woman. I, this doesn't look good, partner. The fairy's got a real hold on this guy. Very well, my dear. If you can find someone truly worthy, someone... Lost in his own world, Harold Fugar is for several moments oblivious to your presence. The flushed cheeks, the twinkling eyes, the broad, satisfied grin, and most notably, the pristine leather gloves all convey an unmistakable message. But then, Mr. Fugar finally notices you, albeit too late. Shh! Enough with the gawking! Since Fugar and his group are drinking right outside the brothel, they might have been inside recently. 
Harold Fugard pauses, seemingly grappling with the weight of your words. You wait several minutes until the echoes of Harold's guffawing finally <laughs> subside. Ah, uh, aren't you the funny one? Ah, you must have taken a solid knock to the noggin. Get out of here, before we kick your ass into orbit. Oh, you seriously crossed the line. Folks who do that usually meet a real nasty end. The barfly happily drinks some moonshine. You are a resilient warrior in the realm of alcohol.
Sitting in the station manager's chair is a giant who's been groomed to within an inch of his life. His towering figure is surrounded by papers and folders full of paper. The giant can't help but drool slightly as he flips through a thick binder. Hey, listen, listen, what do you think about this? By the grace of technological advancement and the comprehensive harmonization of our collective labor, we have not only met, but far exceeded the norms of public transportation. Under the banner of technological triumph, we do not rest on our laurels, no. The giant's immense pleasure in his own writing is impossible to miss. Thanks to the enduring faith of our people, we are able to turn dreams into reality. What do you think? The giant's chest swells with pride. Yes, indeed. I am he. How may I assist you? Um, regrettably, Tobias Newman failed to meet our expectations, and he became the target of numerous grievances from other employees. In light of his intolerable drinking, we will find another professional to monitor our magic scanner. Uh, I mean, magic scanners. Uh, yes, we have several of them. Is that a sincere offer? Then yes, I'll gladly reinstate Tobias Newman. Lazar Cogsmith remains firmly planted in his chair. Yes? What can I do for you? The station was already in this state on my first day of work. But the important thing is one of our three scanners is still working. I'm not sure who you think you are, but I'm confident you have no grounds to accuse me. Now... Kindly leave me be. I have work to do. 
Mr. Cogsmith is motionless for me. And you can almost hear the gears grinding in his massive... <laughs> my, my apologies. I didn't grasp the gravity of the situation. Rest assured, it will be just like he never left. I hope you and I can remain good friends. Perhaps you could put in a good word for me if you're able? As the saying goes, I work tirelessly in the pursuit of technological tri- A group of thugs are eyeing Mick with obvious disgust and hatred. Well, well, if it ain't old Mickey Stick the prick in any home, Mortensen. I think he's even sober today, boys. What's wrong, Mick? Money tight? Run out of the good old Wonder Pop? Have you considered moonlighting at a brothel? In conclusion, he loudly clears his throat and spits on the ground by Mick's boot. Nah, keep those worries stoked, partner. They'll kill you quicker than bootleg moonshine. But don't sweat it, partner. As my dear mama used to say, unlovable buggers are always the first to spread hate. The fuck are you yapping about, Mick? Don't think too hard, Joe, or you'll overheat like a neglected automaton. Hmm? Seems like it, partner. What do you want, Joe? I'm on important business here. That's tough talk coming from you, Mick. But Simon's name isn't gonna protect you this time. Your debts are due, old pal. Today. If you're not ready to pay with honest work, then... Well... The big man said he's willing to accept blood instead. Boy, that's rich. You talking about honest work? It's my past life chasing me, partner. There must be one or two little things you're running from, yeah? But that's not a conversation for new friends. Let's leave it for another time. The only thing you'll be leaving here is your teeth. <laughs> Oh! 
Simon slams the phone down with a clang, exhales sharply in frustration. Damn those wretches! Why can't we manage the distribution of power like gentlemen? With a muttered curse, he picks up his whiskey glass and takes a sip. Back again, mate. I hope you brought some good tidings this time, because I've had my fill of bad news for today. I knew you'd handle it, my friend. It's in your blood. Many thanks. Red Simon firmly clasps your hand, his eyes narrowing as he briefly scrutinizes you. You know, you've got a real knack for this kind of thing. There's another matter I could use a hand with. We're in the midst of a power struggle right now. The result is utter chaos. Influence is something you've got to keep a tight grip on, my friend. So I need you and Mick to... sort out this mess. There's only two sides in this tug-of-war, mate. Ma One side... Red Simon hasn't laid any new cards on the table. Really? You've got a weird sense of humour, my friend. This city is under Director Zindo's thumb. But you and I can give him a little nudge towards the right joy. Have a chat with the representatives of both candidates. Find out what makes them tick. Pick whatever side you fancy and use whatever criteria suits you. I don't give a damn who comes out on top, as long as they don't get in my way. I don't have time for this. I have an appointment with Director Zindo. You're a ge Give one of them a helping hand. Then we'll bide our time until the results come in. Oh, and I'll need both of you at Zindo's office later today to- Better not be late for this, mate.
You're right on time. Excellent. Allow me to introduce the big cheese of the Eastern Syndicate. As you step into the room, your attention is immediately drawn to a towering giant. Is this the reality you're presenting to me, Miss Jean? Yet all I hear are excuses and empty promises. All the managers seem to have their grubby hands in the pot, undermining the future we're trying to forge. The woman responds with a brisk nod, her achingly beautiful face devoid of emotion. Mr. Zindo, before we go any further, do you want me to deal with these? No. They're here to assist in this same matter. The woman's lips press together in a thin line as Wayne Zindo's bushy brows furrow in displeasure. <clears throat> Good day, Director Zindo. Red Simon. Yes, you hit the mark all right. Our rail operations are in complete turmoil, the automaton delivery already severely delayed. Now, I would prefer not to summon a syndicate security detail, if it can be avoided. Indeed I have, Director. My protégé will assist you with the local shady characters. A protégé, you say? Let's get a few details out of the way. You answer only to me, and don't get the idea this is a partnership. Interesting, but hardly extraordinary. Men of influence like myself and Mr. Harrington are often victims of the ignorant and envious. I'll leave this sort of thing to the authorities. I have more pressing matters to attend to. Excellent. It's high time we strengthened our ranks. For the first time, genuine emotion flickers across the woman's face. I can deal with this on my own, sir. We're well beyond that phase, Letta. Now, to the final detail. What compensation are you asking? I won't dance around it, Mr. Zindo. We need to hustle over to New York, and the only ride in town is your tra- Fair enough. Remember that the success of our operation rests upon your shoulders. Miss Jean, you will guide this traveler through the particulars. You're dismissed. The woman nods and immediately exits the room. You are plainly expected to follow. Whether it was Zindo's harsh words or the nature of her assignment, Miss Jean's vexation is palpable. Looks like I've got no choice but to bring you two along. Just know that I'm the Frontier's sharpest headhunter, the one Zindo trusts with his private dealings. I expect you to pull your weight. We need to deal with the problem quickly. Here's the rundown. A train carrying a shipment of automatons to the capital is trapped in a tunnel. None of Zindo's agents have any answers as of yet. The mission is simple. Identify the mess and clean it up. Start in the tunnels. If the train isn't functional, that's your first clue. And if our intel is correct, some magical critters are lurking around the site too. Director Zindo is less than pleased with the progress of the investigation. They will face the consequences of interrupting the Syndicate's agenda. Zindo has placed his trust in me, and I will not disappoint him. Notice how determined this loyal team... Well, no point dawdling, man.
था
stands a freakish oddity in trousers and suspenders. The creature looks a lot like a gremlin, but three times bigger than normal. It's totally unprecedented for a magical being to have a position of authority in a tech facility. Ah, oh, hello there. Welcome to my establishment. You can address me as Mr. Gregat. Manager, you? You swine! You're the one behind our supply issues, aren't you? You've got 60 seconds. Talk. Ah, my dear lady. Let us converse like proper beings, hmm? Hello. Because, my friend, I am a very effective manager, yes. Who gives a womp rat's tail who's in charge, as long as everything keeps ticking along smoothly, hmm? <laughs> This lady here, she works for that Eastern Syndicate big shot, Wayne Zindo. Which would leave lots of beings out of work, hmm? Listen to me. This creature is only pretending to care about social problems. Go tell that to the workers, milady. Everything is running so efficiently, the factory is spitting out more goodies than we're anticipating, hmm? Tasty ones, I might add. And, well, I've been made. Look here. We were not all born yesterday. This place is running like a dream. Toss a few bucks at the inspectors and they won't bat an eye at management's little peculiarities. In other words, he's been handing out bribe. My friend, I personally ensure our ongoing success. Believe it, I can literally taste the quality. Still have doubts? Take a peek in our stock room, hmm? See for yourself, yeah?
Yes, yes. Are you finished with your little game of judging books by their covers? In all my cycles running this joint, You've been harboring your magical lackeys right here on the premises and had the gall to lie to our faces. Milady, why would I risk losing a good thing? Just because I have a smidgen of magical blood doesn't mean I can identify every magical being in existence. It's the emblem of the local orphanage where I sometimes source my labors, yes. Uh, it's been a huge headache getting those little scamps to show up for work. And if that syndicate fellow can't puzzle out what's going on at the orphanage... That sounds like a lead. We spotted those same monsters near the tree. Indeed, big man. Now let's take care of this gremlin. Sorry to burst your bubble, milady, but I ain't budging. Oh. No, not the security department. No, no, no. Unnoticed, the letter had fallen behind as you were walking and was intercepted by an unfamiliar man. Letta's arms drop limply to her side. Eight. Four. Now, tell your friends you'll be gone for a while. As you approach the two of them, the man vanishes down a narrow lane. The busy. Just w wait. You have no idea what's going on, but your companion is in danger. Letta turns and rushes through the door the guy indicated, and moments later, a single gunshot. E As you enter, a shaken Letta is awakening from her trance. Recognizing you at once, she relaxes slightly. Damn it, Letta! I know you have a reputation as a stonehearted killer. But this here... I didn't want this. I... couldn't control myself. I don't know him, and I don't want to. Ugh. Please keep this between us. Then you remember more about it than I do. All I can recall is that man touching my arm to stop me. As you wish. A young dwarf, a teenager perhaps, is pacing up and down outside the orphanage. What immediately sets her apart from other dwarves is that she's carrying no technological devices whatsoever. It appears she spotted you as well. She's making her way to Wardy. Uh, hey there. Do you, like, know anything about the Master of the Orphanage? 
Um, not exactly. It seems we've stumbled upon a small problem. The girl sucks in a lungful of air as if gearing up for an impassioned speech. Okay. The deal is that Master Nemerus, the master of the orphanage, has, like, vanished into thin air. She keeps babbling on about how the house is some kind of danger zone. I'm telling you, I'm gonna find him. I swear it. That snake won't stop yapping about some poltergeist thing in there. I offered to help, but she was all like, I don't need you. Master Nemerus is this super famous mage, you know? And he's the only elf anywhere who's actually willing to teach us dwarves. With this assertion, the girl stands a bit taller. Master Nemerus promised to teach me how to, you know, reach out to a weaver directly. Orla Byrne, the inspector. She's clueless when it comes to magic. It sounds like the Syndicate chose to send Orla Byrne for this The girl's eyes are glowing with fervent zeal. Ta-da! This is Rizal. I mean, come on! Isn't he, like, dreamy beyond words? Well, on a purely aesthetic basis. He's perfect! You want to confess your love to a weaver? Those near-immortal demigod types who drip magic into our world? Yes. I'm at a loss for words here, pod. I've long suspected that every mage has a few loose screws. I'll ask again. Are you, you know, here to see Master Nemerus? You know, some kids from the orphanage disappeared too. Alright, let's go talk to Burn together. You seem, like, totally capable of handling yourself. As for... Half-educated? When it comes to magical theory, not even a fancy Elven Academy student could top me. I've memorized all the tomes on restoration magic, and I'm actually pretty decent at healing spells. Perfect. The orphanage door swings ominously open with a series of drawn-out creaks. From within wafts the noise of shrill screams, unsettling howls, and a heavy pounding. A disheveled woman bolts out of the open door. <laughs> with that, she slumps to the ground, where she rocks herself back and forth, pupils wide. She glances fearfully over her shoulder, then continues in barely more than a whisper. I don't know how I'm going to report this. I didn't get to the documents. I never even made it to the library. I'm not going back in there. The woman falls silent, her gaze fixed on nothing at all. We've got to figure this out on our own. So here's the plan. We head inside... Snack the key, then uncover all the answers in Master Nemerus's. The lass is spot on, Pop. It's Magda, Darren, by the way. Nice to meet you.
Ceres Ostentium. be Timmy, right? It's Tim. Thanks, but I would have managed anyway, you know? <laughs> the main thing is to wait for the right moment. But whatever. What do you want? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. <sighs> okay. If anything, Master Nemerus will wipe the floor with you. <laughs> He's the strongest mage in the world. And someday, we'll be just like him. What does he do with the gifted ones? I'm, like, totally gifted too! Master Nemerus reads to us from a book. Nothing big, but it's a start, you know? If I was 12, I wouldn't need to hide when all these creepy people come. Here's the key. But don't lose it or you're dead. There's a bunch of them. There's that rich guy whose people give out money the grown-ups from the factory, and some of the workers here. They all think we're stupid. But I overheard Mr. Long talking to some people. Then, there's some other creeps who target the most talented kids, or so I've heard. They come around once a month or something like that. Yeah, a few times. He's fancy, always puts on a big smile for the press. So his henchmen come around once in a while and take someone away. Oh yeah, it was Mr. Long for sure. He took Charlotte, Mickey, Steve, Jackie, Jacob, Elise, and a few others last time. Mr. Long is bad, but now he's the one who has to sit quietly for a couple of minutes and think about his temper. Yeah, and tell Master Nemeris about the bogeyman I summoned. I hope he's okay there. I mean, no, he's definitely okay. Hey, looks like our new acquaintance is helping herself to Nemeris' stuff. This sphere was meant for me? Yes. Uh, I mean, no! Besides, it's not like Nemeris has any use for it now, right? It's a magical orb of concentration? All right, never mind that. To be honest, I needed to contact my dear Rizal. Huh? Guess I squeezed it a bit too hard or something. Wow! I, I can feel it getting warmer. See? It's like a really potent arcane relic. Uh, the sphere is still meant for me. And, I mean, if it was important to Nemerus, he would have carried it with him wherever he went. 
So it's better that I take the sphere than leave it gathering dust until some kid messes with it. None taken, shorty. It's a damn fine compliment. No disrespect, but it's not for you. A, like, almost complete stranger. Yes, it could, like, theoretically make a really big boom. But any energy source can be dangerous. Besides, Rizale would never risk my life like that. I mean, he didn't, like, talk to me personally. If Nemerus was here, he'd confirm it. Yeah, that all sounds 100% legit. Partner, let me tell you. When one of them stinking weavers is involved, trouble follows every time. I'm gonna ignore that! <sighs> The sound of heavy breathing prompts you to turn to Magda. 
These kids are horrifying. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, I've seen them. But this is, like, different. They're supposed to be, like, good. She cuts herself short as understanding dawns. Hey, that's right. They are children. Hmm. Having come to a decision, she straightens her posture, and determination flashes in her eye. Yeah, he will. And I? I'm gonna save everyone I can. One has to wonder if Magda's motives are entirely selfless. As she speaks of goodness, her gaze drifts into the distance. Come on. I need to get to Rizal as soon as possible. She steps away, but you can still hear the faint murmur of her voice. I've been such a dummy.
An eerie sight unfolds before you as a grotesque figure hunches over a small, scared boy. Its limbs have grown disproportionately, a pair of pointed elven ears still discernible. However, what lingers of him now exudes an inescapable air of unsettling deformity. You observe smaller figures in the vicinity, each displaying the same distorted features. Ahoy, little mates! It seems we have a few lost souls meandering our magical place. But now, we are prepared for anything and anyone. You're a playful spirits and greet them as I have shown you. Let me explain. The abhorred mage's battered form lies sprawled on the ground, yet he summons enough strength for a desperate plea. My only wish was that my charges be free to embrace the joys of youth. <coughs> Those syndicate sons of bitches herald an age of wonders. Of machines and marvels on green. <laughs> These youngsters are vanishing without a trace. And who will investigate? In fact, uh, the two faced scoundrel promised to do just that. They had taken William. I. <laughs> My mind couldn't rest. Oh, it was all so promising at first. Ah, oh, but soon after, Harrington informed me that his continued assistance came with a price. His people would periodically arrive to collect a child and carry them away. That was when I began to suspect a darker motive. And the next time Harrington's people came around, they proved me right. Leslie Harrington deserves nothing short of damnation. Oh, such a smart, promising boy. 
Oh, I never thought they would take him. He was too young. Oh, it's the other ugly souls who work here. I couldn't stand by and do nothing. <laughs> well, they won't meet their end in that wretched factory, at least. He's not really even numerous anymore. See, that's the thing about magic. This is the issue with mages. One feeble-minded spellcaster goes rogue and soon there's carnage. I am still in my right mind. And <laughs> truly, are you completely unaware of the treasure you carry? What whispers to me of the artifact's existence? Ages past, a desperate mother sought my assistance. I advised her to seek the unwoven filament. An artifact from the golden age of magic. And lo, you arrive. Blame the Lawbringer for our transformation into the Abhorred. It was Reyes who drew the curtains on the golden age. People say he's the bloke responsible for making all this advanced tech a reality. Regarding the unwoven filament, uh, that object you carry contains knowledge of the tenets which govern this world. Enough! We need to finish this before he recovers his strength. Hear me out! I wove this enchanted haven for the children. I ask, but one thing of you, grant us mercy. Let me take the children and free. I promise. I will provide for them. The world is a slightly brighter place with one less corrupted mage in it. He deserved better, you know. Just like those kids did. As you exit the scorched remains of Nemeris's magical world, the young dwarven mage approaches you. Fit Magda is obviously shaken, her usual poise replaced by an atypical unease. I was thinking... I wanted to find a teacher, you know? Taking a deep breath, she makes a carefully rehearsed request. <sighs> I know we've just met in all. I think I'd be useful to you on your journey. Nope. Uh, my plan is pretty, you know, straightforward. A spark lights up her eyes when she mentions the Celestial Weaver. What do you say? You might be new to this place, but you've already got the right connections. The Dwarven Mage practically bounces up and down with excitement. Oh, that's wonderful! So, like, where are we heading next? from somewhere behind you, and you turn around. Good day. I don't have time, so let's get right to the point. You happen to be extremely helpful for Mr. Wallace's campaign. She hands you a massive and rather heavy bundle. We hope it will be useful in your and Mr. Simon's field of work. She nods her head politely and turns around to walk. Wayne Zindo is standing by the window, peering into the grey fog cloaking the city. You recall that the messenger you saw at the entrance was in tears. Miss Jean, the delay in your arrival is not welcome. Despite the director's gentle tone, 
Coletta's whole frame goes rigid when he speaks. Well, then I shall reiterate. Letta, do you bring answers? At last, and it only took about a year. Observe closely, Letta. This capable hire has accomplished what you could not. You have my gratitude. That is welcome news indeed. You've earned your reward, no doubt. Is there anything else? Gentlemen and gentlewomen, the Syndicate acknowledges your pivotal role in resolving this difficult logistical challenge. The train waits at the station and will soon be ready for boarding. We leave for Newark forthwith. As for you, Letta, you will join Red Simon and his protege. Will do, Mr. Zindo. Excellent. Lucy? Lucy! Tell them to load my bags.